Hey there, friends. Thanks for checking in. This is a Springfield Armory Operator 1911, released December 20th, 2021. And this is a beautiful handgun. Love the 1911 platform. I love the way this shoots. I shoot the emissary so well, and then when I grabbed this and took it to the range, I shot it just as fine. I was so pleased with everything it has to offer. Check out those grips. VZ G10 grips, 8-round magazine, 5-inch match-grade barrel, and a trigger that measures just at 4.5 pounds. It has a pick rail right there, Cerakote black, 3-dot sights, and a tritium front dot. It really is a stunning looking and shooting 1911 but over here we've got a bare bones mill spec 1911 parkerized finish there wood grips diamond checkering arched mainspring housing seven round magazines no rail or anything like that this one has three dot sights you can see that it has a beaver tail that's much shorter as well as a thumb safety that is only on the left side. I failed to mention that the operator has an ambidextrous thumb safety, which is certainly left-handed friendly. But the one thing that these have in common, outside of being a 45 ACP 1911, is that both have forged frame and slide steel and match grade barrels and that speaks highly for Springfield Armory to add that in both of these fine 1911s. It also has a fine trigger measuring a little heavier four and three quarters pounds but I love that 1911 reset right there. How can you beat it? Even back in the day that was an amazing trigger and it remains true today. The question for this video is, what are the differences that the operator offers, the more modern features, versus the Millspec 1911? So let's compare them right now. I already showed clear with both of these handguns. They are fine shooters in many respects, both of these. So there are no great differences there. However, I love some of the features that this offers. Let's take a look at the slide. See that matte black finish on top with the mill spec? And over here we have a little more gloss. Not a heavy gloss like the emissary, but a Cerakote slide. I don't think they were very interested in Cerakote back then. Actually, the purists love that parkerized finish. They said, you know what? It gives it that old-time look that they're looking for, as well as many of the features. We'll look at the grip here. Here we have VZ. G10 grips. Here we have wood diamond checkering. There is no doubt that the modern grips offer a more firm feel. I'm a big fan of G10 grips and it's offered right here with the new operator 1911. Looking at the mainspring housing, they use the octo grip with a flat mainspring housing on the operator. Over here is a arched mainspring housing. But if we look at the beaver tail, we can see how much longer it, it travels, if that's even a way to say it. Let's just say a larger beaver tail with the operator. And if we look at the hammers, we can see, see a spurred hammer and a skeletonized hammer. Both feel pretty well the same as each other. Okay, the, that spring weight feels the same. Take a look at the trigger. A flat piece there. Okay, here we have a skeletonized trigger. Both work just fine. No issues there whatsoever. I already mentioned the rail. You can see that. I don't think in the 1911 or thereabouts, they were interested in attaching a light laser combination to their mil spec 1911s. But if we look at the sights, this has three dot sights. I think back in the day, they did not actually have the dots. But over here, we've got three dot sights. They ride a little bit higher, serrated black below. But a tritium front night sight, which is certainly a nice feature on any, any firearm, let alone a 1911. One of the things that is 
different, and I think even the purists who love the mil spec would notice would be the magazines. Okay, here we have a seven round magazine, 45 ACP, and over here we've got an eight round magazine. Now they are similar in many respects because Springfield knows how to keep that 1911 platform alive and the, the, the way that it functions is phenomenal with both of these handguns. But they both use a GI style guide rod, okay? Five inch barrel. GI style guide rod and they both disassemble the same way. Let's go ahead and take a look at that and we'll come back and talk more about these fine 1911s. Hundred and thirty grain hollow points. Let's take a look at the slide serrations. The mill spec uses very thin and tight slide serrations, a bit wider with the operator on top. Also forward serrations that we don't see on the mill spec. The thumb safety is quite a bit wider. More real estate with the operator on the right. And of course it is an ambidextrous thumb safety. Take a look at the grip safety. It does have the memory bump right there on the operator. Not so much on the mill spec. And then the octo grip on the mainspring housing. Is where the mill spec uses vertical serrations on the arched mainspring housing. Looking at the ejection port on the mil spec 1911, you can see that Springfield lowered and flared it, much like the operator. All right, adds to reliability with ejection. I have to say, after shooting both, I really love the operator. I, I just like the way I like the way that front tritium dot stands out with the with the rear sights there. I like the modern features, you know, when I grip this, you know, you got the G10 grips. I can't say I'm a purist. I love 1911s in general. I love Springfield 1911s. They do an incredible job, and they did an incredible job with both of these guns. Which one would you choose? Are you a purist that would go with the mil spec 1911, or have you shot the operator or the emissary and have been won over by the very nice modern and enhanced features i love them both but i really like the way this shot at the range maybe a little bit better no complaints here if you like videos like this please subscribe and share i always appreciate the thumbs up button thanks for watching and you guys be safe